Hi, it's Mike Stiles, and this is This Week in the Metaverse, your weekly newscast that keeps you up to date on everything that isn't real and yet is. Listen every week if you don't want that other world sneaking up on you. It's June 20th. Let's see what happened this week. What's more negative than bad? Worse. And that's what crypto managed to accomplish over the weekend. Sure, Elon Musk gave Dogecoin a boost with a tweet, but overall there was another sharp sell-off with Bitcoin sinking under 18000 and Ethereum under 900 Crypto layoffs continued as the overall crypto market cap was down almost 10% on the day. Let us remind you that Bitcoin was at 69000 in November, and Ethereum was at 4878 So for Ethereum, it's down 81%. What caused this running kick in the groin to investors? Well, it's not a very good environment for volatile, speculative, highly experimental investments, is it? You may have heard something about inflation and interest rate hikes and all those goodies that make life tougher and cause people to cling on to cash. But hey, isn't this a great buying opportunity? Doesn't crypto have enormous upside potential? Bank of America's digital asset strategist says, uh, no, not until stagflation fears are over. Still, countries are looking into their crystal balls and they see the inevitability of some kind of digital currency. They just want it as controlled and centralized as fiat currency. In China, use of the ECNY, or digital yuan, is being expanded beyond consumer goods purchases. At the same time, Beijing is cracking down on other crypto like Bitcoin because why have competition if you don't have to? And Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, who you'd think should be busy with other things, slipped in a mention of a digital currency system during a news conference. He said most major economies have or will have instant 24-7 payments, and America's FedNow service is coming in 2023. So they're examining whether a U.S. central bank digital currency could be part of that domestic payment system. We're on our way to everything you buy being tracked and logged by the government. Yay! Of course, digital currency is only one facet of the metaverse, the focus of our little podcast. Are the overall metaverse economic prospects collapsing? McKinsey & Company says, oh, hell no. Those weren't their exact words. They aren't that cool, but they are beyond bullish. The firm estimates the metaverse will be a $5 trillion economy by 2030. They aren't just guessing. They've studied metaverse adoption, its potential, and how the behavior of people and companies has been shifting. Have you been on your best behavior? $5 trillion is a lot, so where is that money being generated? E-commerce will be the biggest contributor, followed by virtual learning, advertising, and gaming. Venture capitalists are still into it as well. Since January, $120 billion has been invested in the metaverse, almost double what was put into it in 2021. McKinsey found 59% of consumers are actively engaging in metaverse activities today. David Matthews at Digital Trends has been doing some thinking about how we'll work together in the metaverse, and his thoughts are that we won't be doing that anytime soon. He looked at a new study out of a German university that had 16 people work for a week totally in VR using hardware that's readily available today. It lowered their productivity 14% and increased their frustration over 40%. It also increased stress and anxiety. Wait, there's more. There was eye strain, fatigue, nausea, and migraines. Just a lousy day at the office, honey. David concludes it's not that we won't someday work in the metaverse, but for that to work, VR headsets have to get better and more studies need to be done. And Microsoft has warned security and identity issues need to get solved because they're big opportunities for bad actors. And I'm not just talking about Amber Heard. Okay, we told you how crypto was doing, but what about NFTs? As with so many other things, not a lot of good news to share, unless you hate NFTs. Popular collections are seeing less trading volume and prices are going down. Some pundits are even calling NFTs dead. Hey, maybe you should release a dead NFT collection. According to a study from CashNet USA, Asia is still interested. Singapore and Hong Kong lead in NFT interest, which might not be such a big surprise thanks to the strong gaming culture there. Singapore's Speaker of Parliament is even selling NFTs of his landscape photos. For charity, of course. On the other side of the crypto coin, countries like Poland, Nicaragua, Jamaica, and Ireland don't seem to be big NFT fans. 
Think that through all of this, you're somehow still making money with crypto? Oh, be patient. The IRS is coming to get you. And you know when they give something a cool operation name, they're serious about it. The Internal Revenue Service is launching Operation Hidden Treasure, meaning they think you have treasure and you're trying to hide it from them. In case your accountant hasn't told you, you have to report your crypto income. If you don't, you're doing a little thing we like to call tax fraud. Apparently, some people have been trying things like carrying out recurrent financial transactions under $10,000, using shell corporations, and using blockchain cloaking to avoid the tax man. The government desperately needs this money for studies on which month meerkats prefer to have sex, so pay what you owe. That's what we've got for you this week. Tell others about the show because word of mouth is powerful, and that includes your mouth, and we'll be back next week. (music) 